Hello, and welcome to MC in Focus, a student-produced newscast coming to you live from Rockville Montgomery College. I'm Austin Duanas. I'm Roxana Sorto. And I'm your meteorologist, Cesar Corneja. We cover stories of interest to MC students and residents of Montgomery County. As a class, we present the news you need to hear. That's right. In the news this week, general neutral bathrooms could be making their way into Montgomery County Public Schools. Board members addressed the idea at a meeting last week. The proposal came from a Bethesda mother with two high school students. She says some kids were afraid to use the bathrooms because of bullying. MCPS CEO Andrew Zuckerman said the, the board would consider the plan. The county's guideline says students must be given access to gender-specific areas that align with their gender identity. There is still no timetable for the release of the Mueller report. Attorney General William Barr is expected to miss Tuesday's deadline to hand the report over to Congress. This likely means the finding of special counsel Robert Mueller will stay a secret from the public for now. Barr's original letter to Congress regarding the report said Mueller's team did not find enough evidence to prove there was collusion between President Trump and the Russian government. However, some House Democrats say they want to look deeper into the evidence themselves. Also, I-270 is getting a makeover. Plans to expand the highway in the hopes of cutting back the traffic are in the works. If all falls through, work will begin in 2020. The Montgomery County Council says they're concerned about local residents' feedback. But county officials are happy that Maryland State Highway Administration and the Department of Transportation are working to ease traffic in Montgomery County. Montgomery County Council President Nancy Navarro said she wanted the state to respect those concerns that these residents have. Our Germantown campus is celebrating a big anniversary tomorrow. In honor, of its, in, in honor of its 40th year, the college will sponsor a community event to mark the occasion. The event will be held at 2020, 2200, sorry, 2200 uh, Observation Drive in Germantown. Anyone who comes out will learn about the history of Germantown. The event will also have live entertainment, prize drawings, mini sport clinics, and some tasty food. The event will go on, rain or shine. And finally, midterms are now officially over, which means it's time to give brains a break. That's exactly what MC is doing this week. Montgomery College hosted a little event on each campus last week, offering students a chance to give their brains a break. After an exhausting week of studying and test taking, the Students' Wealth and Health and Wellness Center set up fun activities to increase mindfulness and reduce stress. As students, we need to remind ourselves to give our brains a break every now and then to change things up, rest, and recharge. Question. What is 14 feet high, 34 feet long, is the second largest raptor to walk the planet and is coming to MC Rockville campus? The answer, Stan. Stan is a life-size copy of a Tyrannosaurus rex specimen discovered in South Dakota back in 1987. He is, nearly, he is a nearly complete skeleton with 199 bones recovered. Some may recognize Stan from his original display in the lobby of the Discovery Communications Building in downtown Silver Spring. Discovery donated Stan to Montgomery College. He is soon to be displayed next week in the Science Center at a atrium on Rockville campus. And now we have Cesar Cornejo with the weather. So we're here in the Tidal Basin, of course, with the cherry blossoms. And yes, it is that time of year again where it's the annual National Cherry Blossom Festival here in DC in the Tidal Basin. We got these cherry blossoms as a gift from Japan in 1910. And the National Park Service has officially stated that they are in phase four of their bloom cycle. This is due to the seasonably warm and above average temperatures that we are gonna be experiencing and have been experiencing. Luckily, that has pushed now peak bloom from April 3rd over to April 1st. So this weekend and starting the beginning of next week will definitely be the best time to go watch them. And that right there is no April Fool's joke. Friday will be nice. We are having temperatures going to be in the high 80s, uh, 60s, my apologies. But it's going to be cloudy. Then we will see that it does cool down a bit in the evening. Going on into Saturday morning, that temperature picks right back up with sunny temperatures going into the low 70s. Unfortunately, we do have a cold front coming in, bringing in some rain. But that rain does persist going on into Sunday, 
So definitely want to keep an umbrella because we are going to be experiencing some highs in the low 50s. The rain does start to taper off finally towards the evening time and after that it becomes clear skies. So if you're trying to of course see the uh, cherry blossoms, Saturday will definitely be your day. Well, sounds good. Saturday definitely sounds good. Definitely will be. Coming up on MC in Focus, sports with Arlene, followed by Apple's announcement for a new credit card and an update on the pandas in the national zoo. We'll be right back after these student-produced commercials. program at Montgomery College. The television program is designed primarily for students to gain knowledge and skills needed to pursue career in television. It teaches the students skills applicable to the real world as a writer, as an editor, as a director, and many more. I recommend the television program because it will prepare you to enter the job market with the appropriate education. tell us about the Wizards making history this week. Arlene, what do you have for us? Well guys, basketball history was changed on Wednesday night during the Wizards' 124-121 victory over the Suns. Phoenix's Devin, Devin Brooker became the youngest player in the NBA history with uh, consecutive 50-point games. The 22-year-old finished with 50 points and 10 rebounds. Booker scored his 46 point when he missed his initial shot, fell to the floor and got back up to catch the rebound and rattled in a second shot with 5.08 to play. His 50th point came on a layup with a minute 30 left, tying the score at 118. Next up, the Wizards are at the Utah Jazz tonight. However, Tuesday was not the night for the Wizards as they lost to the Lakers 124 to 106. LeBron James had 23 points, 14 assists and 7 rebounds. Contavious Caldwell Pope scored 29 points and JaVel McGee had 20 points and 15 rebounds for Los Angeles, who had lost 20 of their last 27 games and plummeted out of their playoffs race since their last set of consecutive wins. And now to the madness. Last night was a big night for Virginia as the Cavaliers won 53-49 over Oregon. Virginia clamped down on the Ducks, holding Oregon scoreless for more than five minutes. If they win tomorrow against Purdue, Virginia will advance to their first Final Four since 1984. Virginia Tech goes up against Duke. And finally, calling all male and female cheerleaders, tryouts for Montgomery College's cheerleading team are being held April 13th from 2 to 5 p.m. on the Rockville campus. Check out MC's website for more information on when tryouts will be held and for everything you'll need. Roxana, Austin, back to you guys at the desk. Well, definitely waiting for the game. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Charlene. You're welcome. And we'll be back after this student-produced package on Mindful Mondays here at Montgomery College. Name a more infamous combination than college students and stress. The two are forever paired together. That's why Montgomery College Mental Health Services Program Manager Stephanie Will created Mindful Mondays. We generally start with a 15-minute guided mindfulness meditation. It's a breathing exercise, so it's all about focusing on your breathing, not necessarily trying to transcend to a higher state or anything. Um, so that's kind of the primary exercise that we do, like I said, for about the first 15 minutes. And then for the uh, 45 minutes after, um, it's just kind of whatever relaxing, quiet activities that a person wants to do. So we have things like Play-Doh and stress balls. Uh, we put up writing prompts, um, coloring, all sorts of things like that. So uh, we really try to make it individual because stress relief is different for every person. So we want to make sure we're not trying to squeeze everybody into one box. After going through the pressure of college herself, then seeing the stress her students faced, she realized she had a way to help. It was a while ago, but you know, I was a college student once upon a time, and I remember just being so stressed all the time and not really having that 
good outlet for it all the time. So it's been really exciting to bring that here to campus and give the students who show up and come every week, uh, you know, really that opportunity to relax and take a break at some point during their day. You can find Mindful Mondays right here in the Welcome Center in room 212 from 1130 to 1230. For MCN Focus, I'm Daniel Price. Thank you. Are you a gamer? Have you ever been interested in simulations? The University of Baltimore presents Simulation and Game Design Panel of Experts. Next week, Shady Grove University will host a panel of local experts who work in the game design industry, featuring a question and answer session. This event will be next Tuesday, April 2nd, from 6 to 7.30 p.m., PM Building 3, Room 3241. There's a new way to purchase products digitally. Apple recently announced one of their newest products, Apple Card. Apple Card is a digital credit card that helps customers better understand payment, payment management. It also eliminates fees and transaction process. There are no more waiting around for things to be finalized. It also provides better security and privacy to prevent fraud. The Apple Card can be accessed through the wallet app on your phone and will be available for U.S. customers to use this summer. Love is in the air in D.C. Mating season has begun, begun for the giant pandas at the Smithsonian National Zoo. The female panda, Mei Shang, has been showing signs that she's looking for a mate. This includes increased estrogen le levels, physical activity, and scent marking her territory. The male panda, Tian Tian, has also been showing signs of interest. However, the two giant pandas will need to move fast. Panda mating season can be as short as 72 hours. The zoo has previously tried to let them mate naturally without very much success. And this week's pet is a dog named Luna. Luna is a two-year-old Siberian Husky. She is a very playful puppy who loves food more than anything. Her favorite place to sit is in the car seat and she makes a great co-pilot for any trip. If you would like to see your pet on TV, you can contact us at mcnfocus.avj at gmail.com and submit footage of your pet. And now, another National Day segment with our very own David Matheson. Hey David, tell us about this week's special days we need to celebrate. Thanks, insert name of anchor. We're just in time for National Nevada Day. You can celebrate by taking a trip to Vegas, but try not to wake up with a tiger in your bathroom, unless you're into that kind of thing. Tomorrow, we have National Doctors Day. March 31st is National Crayon Day, so make sure to pick out your favorite flavor. April 1st is something. I don't remember. I'll probably figure that out later. But moving on, 2nd of April is National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day. April 3rd is National Walk-In Day. And finally, give a big warm welcome to National Burrito Day on April 4th. And this is where I'd eat a burrito if I had one, but I don't, so. <laughs> well, I'm looking for April 1st. Oh, really? oh Austin, okay. are you a prankster? You. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Oh, no, I gotta, I gotta be careful. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's MC in Focused. I'm your host, Roxana Sorto. I'm Austin Duenas. And for sports, I'm Arlene Schindler-Anim. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye.